man in uh, an exercise that took place at the RFU grounds and good to have him in the studio. It's the much eagerly awaited interview and I'm talking about Sasha Mutai who is joining us. Good to see you Sasha. How are you doing bro? I'm very good. You keeping well? Uh, yeah. Kabisa, How is it like, you know, transitioning into yeah. uh, management of the game? You've been there yeah. before in the capacity of vice chairman. Now you're the president yeah. of the federation in a sport that you're passionate about. How does it feel? No, it's a big responsibility and we've taken it with both hands and uh, with the team that was elected, we're working to get rugby back on track. Uh, you see, recently we were also relegated from uh, World Series. Uh, but we are looking at getting back, qualifying for the Olympics, and also now qualifying for Rugby World Cup 2027. So there's a lot of on our plate. We also have to clean up our books, uh, the serious debt that we have to, you know, get back and pay and uh, get things back on track, get us back in the black. We also need to, you know, I said it in my manifesto, we need to build a stadium, and that's part of the agenda. We have been already talking to government about getting land allocated. Because um, many people do not know that KRU is homeless. Actually, yes. we are subtenants <laughs> at RFUA, which is the home of Kenya Rugby. But really, Kenya Rugby is just a subtenant there. So we have to fix a lot of things yeah. and uh, get rugby back on, uh, on track. As a, as a chairman now, mm. it was really troubling and uh, really hurtful because you, you have been a vice chair, you have been a director, you have been at the board of the Kenya Rugby Union. You worked to see Kenya get onto the top level yeah. and when we were relegated from the HSBC series that had got to hurt from an insider's yeah. perspective yeah. that had to hurt no it, yeah it was painful um but it's not a shocker because uh -huh, there was yes. no investment happening you, you know saw you, it, coming it was it, it, it had it was it nearly happened a few years back yes. so we have always been now on the brink uh -huh. um and we need to get back into the top eight uh, when we were there we were in top five yes we qualified for two semi-finals mm -hmm. of a Rugby World Cup. Yeah. So we were top and not because we had put in the investment. Yeah. Now, if you don't put in the investment, unfortunately, we lost sponsorships. Yes. And when the sponsor came back in, Sport Pesa, uh, in December last yeah. year, so basically it's, it kicked in in January this year. Yeah. It was a little bit too late, but, uh, you know, um, we're going to fix it. Now, the challenge is mm. coming back. Yeah. The challenge is coming back. And everybody will be thinking of the field of play mm -hmm. everybody thinks that the field of play is how we are coming back not factoring in the other factors outside of the field of play how are you working around that for us to get back into the hsbc so right now the most important thing is actually to get as you're saying the back office Yes. The back office has to be fixed. You know, in hotels, there's the front office and the back <laughs> office. Yes. Yeah. The same thing. Yeah. Now, the back office is where the problems have been. So behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. Behind the scenes yeah. I mean, if you look at, uh, look at last year's accounts, we can get a rugby and get sponsorships of 25 million. Yeah. You know, to, this is, it's, 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 a, it's poultry. But you see, Kenya Rugby you know, lost confidence of our partners and yeah. sponsors. Now what we are doing is now saying yes, this is a new board, things are going to be done the proper way, there's governance structures coming in, we've even co-opted uh, some other directors who are you know, in corporate world, who are trusted, Yes. Uh, we are saying we are going to put in the systems, the systems are there but they have been slouted there. So no more, you know, none of this cronyism and all that, we are here to build this game, some of us have, you know, we have served in different capacities. Yes. Uh, I've been director, I've been vice chairman, we have a lot of you know, uh, directors who've been there, new directors come in, we have a former Kenya captain who's now a director, yes, yes. So, and we are all, we all have one voice and, 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 and looking at, you know, building this game to what it should be. Yes. With all the talent that we have in this country, there's no reason why we should not be, you know, getting to semi-finals or whether it's fifteens and sevens, yes. in fifteens. Our main aim is, of course, to beat Zimbabwe and uh -huh. Namibia. Yeah. And Namibia is a basic uh, competitor, uh, competitor yeah. for the Rugby World Cup. Yeah. But we have to put in our systems in place. So our plan is to revive the Super Series, but not just revive it, but it's actually to re-engineer the Rugby Super Series into a six-team franchise professional six. league yeah. that will be next year. And uh, But we have to build it up this year. This in, uh, On 28th of July, we'll have a conference, an investor conference, uh -huh. and uh, where we will showcase all the properties that Kenya Rugby Union has 
to you know to give to investors and yes. our partners and our sponsors mm -hmm. to come and partner with us and we show them the pathway and what it actually costs. Um, Kenya Rugby Seven uh, should just <coughs> to get them back. We're already given a budget uh, mm -hmm. to uh, our sponsor, yes. kind of sponsor, um, Sport Pesa, and then had a meeting last week, uh, this, yeah. this week actually, with the Honorable Captain Ronald Kadazi, and, and they are behind us. So even if we have dropped down uh, one level, they're with us, and they have uh, confidence in uh, our plan to get Kenya back up. We also shared this uh, budget with NOC. Yeah. If you look at the budget to get Kenya Sevens back into the World Seven Series and qualify for the Olympics, and also next, it's not just to qualify, we yeah. want to be a medal contender next yes. year. So we have given a budget of around 181 million shillings. Yes. So it's a big budget, but you remember when uh, Kenya was getting to all these uh, semi-finals and performing well, yeah. when we had Mike Friday and Paul True uh -huh. that yes. time, we were running on a budget of $2 million. Yeah. Yeah. Other teams are on $3 million and above. But again, you know, those numbers look big, but people need to remember that rugby is a sport that, you know, it has many numbers. Yes. There's no other team mm -hmm. sport yeah. that has, you know, the numbers. Exactly. Players on the field, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, so it's expensive that yeah. human resource has to yeah. be paid for. Yeah. And that's a reality. Um, for us to compete, we need those resources. Yeah. But for us to get those resources, we need to get the confidence back. Yes. And that is what we are, we are doing now. And we have said, you know, we, we are, you know, trusted and, and some of us have worked before in the union and been successful and have the trust. And of course, you know, other businesses out there, people trust us. So we want to put back the systems and make sure that uh, Kenya Rugby Union is run. The governance structures are good. I was in, uh, in, in an event this week and, you know, with top CEOs yes. of various companies and uh, gave a talk and they are confident that yes, and they were saying, before, yes, what has happened in the past few years, number of years, is that confidence has gone because of governance. When you hear all these stories in the papers, yeah. strikes here and all that. And I had a report about the litigation. Yes. I've asked for every report. So we had, a, Kenya Rugby Union was basically in court a lot of the times. Yeah, we I want I to stop, yeah. I, I think the 15th yeah. uh, coach, uh, Paul Odero, yeah. during yeah. the court, and uh, there was an injunction and everything yeah. coming out of that. And those are the mm. things you don't want to talk about. Exactly, we, we, we do not want to do away with yeah. that. And I always said, I never said in during the campaign period, is that rugby needs to be played on the field, yes. not in courtrooms, and uh -huh. that is what has to happen. Uh, we, we are going to come back now to your manifesto. Every, these things now are happening, you have put them, if you want your house in order and yeah. everything. When you want to come back to your manifesto, you talk about getting a rugby stadium, because yeah. that's key for us, in that everybody now, so far running, Naivasha, mm -hmm. athletics, everybody's diamond league and all that. Mm. Now for you, it's like, you, we need a rugby stadium. Mm. How can we get that into actualization now? So the rugby stadium, um, in my profession, I'm a quantity surveyor. I've been involved in some of the large projects in, 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 in the region. Yes. You know, so I know how to, you know, bring in the partners to make sure this is a reality. Yes. So we are talking to government for a location of land in Kasarani. And we have partners in uh, South Africa who've done stadiums. I've yes. talked to uh, Bugatman and partners, the, pa the director who uh, actually designed Soccer City uh -huh. in, uh, yes. in, Soweto. in Soweto. So he's interested in coming. We have worked together with them on different projects. Yeah. So we have goodwill, that, uh, and we have, you know, the plan is to uh, build a stadium in Kasarani, yeah. probably a 25,000 seater stadium uh -huh. with yes. three fields, also for training, a high performance uh, center there, yes. proper gym. Modern, you know, yes. um, football, but also rugby, rugby stadium. stadium. Football, yeah. rugby stadium. Yeah. That even now, uh, when they're not using it for rugby, we can hire it out. And, and, uh -huh. and uh, yeah. yes. it has to be a commercial venture. Uh -huh. We're also talking to partners so we can come in and, and actually put in money into the development of the stadium. Mm -hmm. And in the SPV that is formed, to, depending on your contribution to building that, we uh -huh. shall uh, help with the tax. Uh, rebates. Yes. We have CAP 470 where, you know, Section 12, 2Z, where if you put money into sports sponsorship, uh -huh, yes. you get uh, tax uh, write-offs. Yes. So we also have a tax, uh, top tax consultant sitting now on the Kenya Rugby Union Board uh -huh. by the name of Cairo Thu. Uh -huh. So all that paperwork we shall do, we shall, you know, bring in these partners who will, we will help them with the tax uh, part of it, uh, benefits, and we shall also now give them the usual packs that come with sponsorships. And on top of that, 
investment opportunity because now they will be part of an SPV of a stadium that is yes. commercial. So they will be earning uh, money from you know, their own investment. Yeah. So it's win-win everywhere. And of course now, this is also in line helping the government achieve its agenda you know, of uh, yeah. sports and sports tourism. But it's private sector that has to do it. You know, we cannot yes. always be said to Naomba Serikali, to Naomba Serikali. <laughs> Begging, <laughs> Begging, yeah. yeah. Gov that, government has yeah. its thing on policy, yes. and the policies are set. And, yeah. and in the, you know, in government, if you look at what parliament passed uh, for this, uh, um, the, the Income Tax Act. Act, and also for uh, tax, uh, you know, tax rebates from sports sponsorships. Yes. It's amazing, and we, we have not uh, exploited that, yeah. you know. So policies, government should just put policies and probably now just uh, support the team when it's going for Olympics yes. and uh, Commonwealth. But the rest of it is up to federations. And the federations have to partner with the private, private business, sector, private yeah. sector. Mm -hmm. And that's why now we also want to introduce the professional uh, um, sides in yes. uh, Actually, general, just like yeah. our friend Ngaro Kamuya keeps mm. saying that, you know, mm. the role of government is not to fund yeah. and support the sporting activities in the country, mm. but to put in place a conducive environment, environment that yeah. probably yeah. would attract yeah. uh, investors and so corporates. For, yeah. And for that we are talking also, I mean, to the, the Minister of Sport uh, talked to the CS and the PS, and, you know, this government is amenable, and we have access to them, yeah. they listen to us, we talk to them. So what we're asking for is that, you know, the land uh -huh. to be allocated and then we shall do the rest of Talk, it. Talking about uh, everything that you <coughs> just talked about uh, brings us to the question of uh, self-reliance. Yeah. And that you need now the Kenya Rugby Union to be self-reliant. How do we get to that level? So, so that's it for us. It's to run it like a business, basically. Uh -huh. yes. Yeah. Uh, and make it attractive. Yeah. yeah. And that is now with the trust of the private sector. Yes and saying that, okay, we have to go professional uh, to compete at that level, yeah. because I mean, Kenya 7s is semi is, was semi-pro, semi -pro. and actually that probably 2012, 2013, um, 2014, we were professional, because yeah. players would earn money that could sustain oh, themselves. Yeah. Because at that point, yeah. um, 10 years ago, basic salary for tier one players was 150,000. Uh -huh. Yes and then there was bonuses. Yes. So you do two good tournaments, you get $2,000, $2,000, 4000 plus yeah. your 1500 Players are going with $5,000 a month, uh -huh. and you are 22 years old, <laughs> 10 years ago. So it was sustainable, it was, yes. it was professional. Yes, it was professional. But now we are back to amateur status, and there's no way you can compete against somebody who day in, day out is doing rugby, yeah. is focused, he knows his house is in order, his family is well fed, the kids are going to school. But when the Kenya Sevens player is going there and he, you know, he doesn't know where the next paycheck is coming from, yeah. that's a problem. So yeah. when Sport Pesa came back in, there was litigation uh -huh. against Sport Pesa, there yes. was an arbitration. Yeah. But we're saying it's enough of these uh, court cases. Uh -huh. yeah. yes. We have to work in harmony. Where are we going? We're not going anywhere, we're in Kenya. Yeah. Yeah, this is our country, we love it, we love yeah. our teams, we have to work together. Uh -huh. This thing of litigation should end, and yeah. it's ha it's ending during this uh, period. And yeah. we want harmonious, good working relationship, and uh, everybody benefits. And the thing is, Kenya has the talent. We have talent falling off the trees. We need to make sure that we give these uh, young boys and girls, men and women, the best opportunity to perform at the highest level, and earn from it. Yes. You know, it, they have to be able to earn from it, and that's what our aim is. Once that is done, I'll build the stadium and I've done my work. Yeah. Yeah. Glad you're talking about, you know, the welfare and plight of players who form an integral part of the sport. You remember just, I think, a few months before you guys took over, before elections, there was one of the legs of HSBC World Seven Series and Kenya Rugby National Sevens players had to go to Twitter, to social media platforms to, you know, appeal mm. for financial help because mm. they are saying that, you know, in as much as they are representing the country and bringing glory back home mm. they are struggling financial over and paid allowances and dues i don't know what are the mechanisms and policies you're seeking to put in place to ensure that you know that malpractice is something of the past you know now that will be something of the past because i mean i cannot associate myself with that this thing of m changa and whatever uh -huh, yes. this is a national team it's a national mm -hmm. asset yeah. it is up to us as the board to bring in the finances yes. mm -hmm. now when you start blaming players uh, and yet you're not doing your work there has to be work done in the boardroom and yes. work done 
on the field. Yes. Once you have done your work and you have delivered to the playing unit what they request for, now you can demand for it. Everyone plays And that is how everybody plays their part. So we mm. cannot have lazy people on the board. And I think uh, the board that I have are good, hardworking people. I've seen them at you know the last uh, two months. Uh, mm. They're working. And we all have to work together. And this thing of going with begging balls will be a thing of the past. Mm. <coughs> we have a tournament coming up in July, the World Rugby Under-20 uh, wow. Trophy. Yes. So we have eight countries, so it's an international event. World mm. Rugby has entrusted us with this. Yes. We had a successful Bates Cup, which was the Africa Under-20. Mm -hmm. um, Zimbabwe won and we were second, so now we want to do better in this. Yes. But it's an international tournament. We have big names coming in, the uh, CEO of World Rugby will be here. Uh, President of Africa Rugby will be here. Uh, President of South Africa Rugby will yes, be here. Yeah. We shall also have uh, uh, Tandaim Tawarira, the beast. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. a World Cup himself, winner. Yeah. He will be here. <laughs> yes. And, uh, he will be coming with the trophy. Yes, yeah, the trophy he took it a um, few couple of weeks back to Paris because yes. it was 100 uh, days to the Rugby World Cup kickoff. Yes. Mm -hmm. And South Africa are the current holder, so yeah. he, he took the trophy back. Mm -hmm. And he will be here in Nairobi. Yeah. So um, there'll be good rugby. There'll be you know, Zimbabwe, that, that, Kenya, the USA team. Yeah. Uh, we'll and that in, that, that in itself, yeah. you know, consideration of Kenya mm. as a host venue yeah. of such prestigious tournaments. Yeah. Does that underscore, you know, the world rugby's confidence and commitment they have in our sport yes so we hosted it in 2009 first time yeah. it was called J jwrt uh -huh. at that time i was director yeah. i was on the board i was the youngest director at that time so i was in charge of sevens but we had uh, the world rugby trophy in 2019 mm -hmm. and now we have been given this opportunity so which is good for the country in terms yes. of also the government agenda of sports uh, tourism so we yeah. are playing our part there and government is also um, with us in this tournament. So we are sitting, the local organizing committee is also formed between Kenya Rugby Union and the uh, Ministry of Sports. So we are working hard on this. We want to deliver flawless, good events. So we want to perform well as well. The development, the planning is on an advanced stage. Yeah, yeah. Now it's, it's basically less than three weeks uh, yes. to kick off. Uh, we look forward to this, and yeah. uh, we invite everybody and the youth, especially who are watching this, because yes. it's their tournament. Yes, uh, yes. To come uh, yes. to the stadium and and watch. I, I, I think I was in a conversation where you struck a deal to take the team to Western Province. You remember, I think uh, the Kenyan team, uh, the 15th team, yeah. going to train in uh, Western Province. I think way way back. And now you look at uh, we are coming on to the Curry Cup, taking it to Nakuru. We had I think three legs. Uh, mm -hmm. We played in South Africa and the yeah. ones in Kenya. Also, what are your plans now in 15's rugby? Because also mm. 15 is a core property of mm. the Kenya Rugby Union. So 15's, we need to get a sponsor. So ah, yes. uh, yeah. Simbas yeah. do not have a sponsor. Mm -hmm. um, the Lionesses do not mm. have a sponsor. Ah, so we yes. are going to showcase, mm -hmm. and Chip also doesn't have a sponsor. Yes. But uh, hopefully next week we shall sign a deal. Mm -hmm. uh, that they'll get sponsorship for this uh, tournament uh -huh. and now we yeah. have to do, I mean we're three, less than three, three months weeks. in office, yes. but we're working on getting sponsorships for these teams yeah. that will give the sponsors, you know, mileage mm -hmm. and uh, what I'm saying is uh, once we showcase everything on 28th of July, we'll have you know, a, a, a cocktail event where uh -huh, we invite yes. CEOs uh -huh. of companies yeah. that we, you know, can partner with us. Our previous partners mm -hmm. and new partners coming in and it'll be global, it'll be streamed yeah. so that people can see out there. We're not just looking at Kenya, it's a global uh -huh. thing, yeah. rugby and Kenya rugby. Mm -hmm. We are very ambitious. You yes. know, we don't, we don't, <laughs> <laughs> ambition we are very ambitious thing, because, yeah. you know, we have seen what we can, we can do. Yes. Kenya, uh, sevens, you know, what, with what they have done, getting mm -hmm. to semi-finals of World Cups and all that. Yeah. And in such a short time, we've nearly got into um, World Cup uh, 15s as yes. well. Just one game off. So we're ambitious mm -hmm. and we know what we can build. Yeah. We're very ambitious. Uh, Africa Rugby is also ambitious mm -hmm. with the new president of Africa Rugby, yes, uh, Herbert yeah. Mensa. Yeah. His the business Ivory Coast. From, he's from Ghana. Ghana. He's from uh, Ghana. Uh -huh. um, He's very ambitious, yes. so we are th speaking the same language. Yeah. So in Latin, it's called consensus at idem, a meeting yes. of minds. <laughs> a meeting of minds. Yeah. Yes. So that is what we are thinking. We are thinking yes. big, uh -huh. and we have thought big before. And uh, yes. uh, and you know, you have to think big. Mm. 
mm -hmm. to get somewhere. Yeah. You know, you have to think like this to get here. But yeah, if you're yeah, thinking this yeah, level, this yeah, is only yeah, so far that uh -huh, you yes. So it, that, that has to happen. True. And it has to be also realistic. We know that uh, we qualify for a World Cup in 2027. Mm -hmm. We're not going to win it. It'll yes. take probably two, th uh, three cycles to now be competitive to get to quarterfinals. Yeah. But for sevens, it's faster. It's an easier path. Yeah. We have also the Lionesses who qualified for WX3, uh, yes. which will be in October. It's a new um, you know, series for women's rugby, because world rugby is taking women's rugby seriously, and yeah. Kenya rugby is as well. Yeah. So our plan, of course, now that we have uh, the Kenya women's team you know, on a global uh, showcase yes. is also to get the sponsorships for them and to, you know, their talent has to be seen. We have two players playing in Japan. We want mm -hmm. even more players to play. Yeah. So we are very ambitious on that also to get the Kenya women's team to qualify yeah. for 2025. We are second in Africa to South Africa. Mm -hmm. And when we played them in Madagascar, I went to Madagascar last month to, to watch the games. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, there's a gap between us and SA. Yes. And we know what we need to do to bridge that gap. Yeah. So we don't want to play second fiddle. Mm -hmm. uh, we are very ambitious and you know with the talent that we have, uh, we shall get there. And we're also now expanding also the girls rugby. Mm -hmm. uh, this In July as well, we'll have uh, girls rugby in schools, in yeah. high schools. Uh -huh. And now next year we want to have it 15 because this will be seven. Yeah. And we need to get that and also get clubs now uh, in Kenya Cup and probably the Super Series, which I'm seeing we need to get women there as well. Mm -hmm. Women side professional. Yeah. Others will be semi-pro. Mm -hmm. But it has to be, we have to force it down. If you are coming to do this, yeah. uh, Kenya Cup have a side for women. Mm -hmm. yes. And then, of course, we have the funding we give to the team. So mm -hmm. the onus is also on us on the KRU to get sponsors for the leagues, which uh -huh. have not had sponsors. Yeah. But once I get a sponsor, and uh, we get a sponsor and we give it to, uh, you know, we, we send the money down to teams. Yeah. We shall also demand that they have extra teams. If you yeah. have a women's team, we get more funding. Uh -huh. And we want you to have age grade. Yeah. So Kenya Rugby Union cannot do everything. Yes. We have to set the policy mm -hmm. at the top and it cascades down. Yes. And we have the talent. We have the talented players. Yeah. And we have also talented coaches. You know, and people who run clubs who are passionate. Yeah. So they will do that work. You know, we can't do everything. But mm -hmm. our focus is that, again, policy and cascade it down. Yeah. And once you see Kenya Rugby Union gets, you know, back the, the confidence of these uh, partners, yes. it cascades down to also the clubs, because mm -hmm. clubs are suffering. You know, every weekend, yeah. and that's why we run for this office, because it's not sustainable that every weekend you people are calling something. you, send them pesa, but it's not sustainable. Yeah. 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 And However and much and you want to do it, yeah. it's not sustainable. And so sponsorship, just like you indicated, is key yeah. to the development of the overall sport. Back in yeah. the day when you were at the helm mm -hmm. as vice chairman, having risen through the ranks from director, vice chairman, mm -hmm. under the legs of Mwangi Mude, yeah. who is considered to have been mm. one of the best performing care you yeah. chairman. Yeah. There was plenty of sponsors at the helm, yeah. you know, Tasca, Safaricom, yeah. Kenya Airways. What do you do? What do you seek to do to restore sanity and order at the Federation so that mm. we, we start attracting, you know, the corporate confidence? Yeah, we, we have to get the confidence back. We have to get rid of these conflicts of interest that have been there. And yes. it's open. People know uh -huh. about it. Yeah. There's nothing to hide. Yeah. There's been issues uh, of sponsorship mm -hmm. and, you know, the directors clashing mm -hmm. with sponsors, which yes. should be the case. Uh -huh. We have to work together. Yes. So egos mm -hmm. should be parted uh -huh. on the side yes. and we work for the good of the game. So it's the good of the game has to be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, you, if, you, if you just think for yourself and you uh, your self-aggrandizement, we don't uh, have room for that. The, when you co-opted uh, the new directors, more so from the private sector yeah. that you actually brought in, I think there were four, four yeah. yeah, the four members that you co-opted. Can you tell us more about them in that what, what are they bringing on to the board of the Kenya Rugby Union? So we have uh, Kairo Thu, uh, you know, he's a lawyer and he's a tax consultant. He's yeah. considered one of the top tax consultants in the country. Uh, he's a director on ICA, Lion Board. He's a director of uh, NCB. He sits on a bank board. He sits on the Kenya Power uh, Company Board. Yes. So he's bringing in that expertise of finance yeah. and legal and to help us push the agenda for you know sports sponsorships and tax uh, mm -hmm. deductions yeah. and basically corporate uh, mm -hmm. governance and yes. he's trusted we have nisha van hook who is in uh, marketing mm -hmm. 
She's a well-known uh, marketer in this in, in, in corporate Kenya. She also sits on the Cat and Country Club. She's the director of sports. Mm -hmm. We have her, then we have uh, Zawadi, Alice Zawadi, who is also a referee. So she'll be yes. representing referees and uh, that part of it. And, mm -hmm. and, and then we have Wanjiku Wairia, um, who is in governance as well. Yes. She's also sitting in a lot of, in Rotary. And she's previously worked with us in Kenya Rugby Union. She was a nutritionist. Uh -huh, so I actually yes. brought her on board when I was director of Sevens. Uh, uh -huh. She was a nutritionist for uh, Kenya Sevens yes. at that time. Um, so right now we have four women. So we have 28, close to 30% representation are women. And we're looking at also increasing that. Yeah. Another thing we have to do is, is uh, you know, update our constitution. Our constitution uh -huh, is updated. Yes. We need mm. to put it in line yeah. with the Sports Act mm. and with World Rugby yeah. and for posterity. Because mm. this constitution of ours, I've been a victim of it as well. It was very political. <laughs> yes. And that's the truth. We have yeah, to say the truth. Yeah, the, 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 and, the, yeah. and we have to correct it. <laughs> and it has to be for the for posterity. Yeah. So that you're not changing for the future generations. Generation. Yes. We have seen you know how the good things in it the bad mm -hmm. things in yes. it and what we need to change mm -hmm. and these changes are going to happen yeah, yeah. we're not afraid of changes mm -hmm. previously people have been afraid that oh the more clubs you have those are now votes that yeah you can't on your side yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. no 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 mm -hmm. the constitution needs to be for the game of rugby not for <laughs> politics yes so we're not supposed to be politicians there and you know mm -hmm. you want to stay in office for what yeah. if the game is not going well what are you wasting your time there doing yes you know? What we want is to build this game and make sure that, you know, it's a pathway and uh, young people can earn from it. Uh -huh, yeah. yes. You know, there's a lot of unemployment, there's, there's yeah. talent. Yeah? Yeah. And if you look at how you have to think forward, you know, even 20 years, 30 years, 40, 50 years uh -huh. going down. Kenya Rugby now is celebrating over 110 years. Yeah. This year, Nondis is celebrating year 100 years. So 100 years yeah. goes. Okay? Yeah. So they celebrate 100 years. Kenya Rugby is more than 110 years, but what have we done? The, yeah. the question usually yeah. goes back to the culture, the yeah. culture of rugby. How would you bring that culture for people to actually come out and now embrace that culture of rugby? Because a 1923 club, I think that's Nondis, 100 years. Yeah. And your friend Auka, I think he was the chairman for Nondis. And uh, that one is really great. And it brings out, people have now will understand mm. that this rugby has been here yeah. for a long, a long time, time for yeah. many decades. So yeah. that culture, people have come to embrace that yeah. culture. Yeah. So yeah, so rugby, and I say rugby, I owe rugby a lot because it <laughs> has made yes. me who I am. It's part of the things where I am in terms of even my success in my profession and in life and yes. all that. Rugby has inculcated in me values. Yes. And those values now we need to cascade it down to, um, you know, young players, yes. young boys and girls to get the rugby culture. <laughs> what has happened? of the recent is that culture has begun to erode, uh, yes. you know, the things of integrity. Mm -hmm. And rugby, integrity is key. Mm -hmm. So yes. what we are bringing back is the integrity. Inter uh, yeah. So that is the most important right mm -hmm. now, which yeah. cascades through even the sponsorship. That is be a game of gentlemen. Gentlemen, yes. It's a <laughs> yes. hard game. Yeah. And ladies now. <laughs> ladies, <laughs> ladies are gentlemen. <laughs> because ladies the ladies are, are playing and they're playing yeah. a really good game. If yeah. you watch the games in Madagascar, yes. and uh, I mean, I had a good time. Those, uh, our Kenya women really yeah. pushed and, and played really well. Yeah. And we want to get back the crowds uh -huh. into the stadiums. Yes. So it's entertainment. You know? True. Instead of people going out and drinking in bars, let's mm -hmm. provide them. You know, that entertainment, is there. yeah. <laughs> we have to improve the infrastructure. Yes. In, in 2023, really, we don't have a stadium with good flood lighting. Uh -huh. Flood lighting now is cheaper. Yes. We have LED lights. It's, yes. you know, it's cheaper even on running in terms of power. Yes. Why don't we have flood light? Why don't we have good pictures with good grass? Yeah. Kikuyu grass comes, you know, it's, <laughs> it, it's, it grows here. It's naturally. here, it's at all. Yet Kikuyu grass is used on uh, fair, in, you know, golf uh, courses. courses globally. Yeah. All that, like in South Africa, the stadiums that have hosted World Cup finals use Kikuyu grass, uh -huh. but it needs water. Now, yes. here that's a problem. We mm. just, you know, if you look at our fields, they're hard. Yeah. So you can't even train. That's why we also had problems with the Kenya Sevens training last year. Yes. Before they went to do camp in Kasarani this year, this is just when we came into office. Yeah. The grounds are hard, so you, the mm. players can't tackle, and that's a reality. Uh -huh. You know, rugby is a physical game you need yeah. to have, and you need to put the investment. Yeah. And Kenya, Sevens, and all the other teams have been punching above their weight. Very true. But now it's yeah. time, it, it's no, no excuses now. Yeah. It's our 
opportunity now to show people that yes, we can raise this money, mm -hmm. we put it in the right place, yeah. and you're gonna you're, you're gonna reap the, the rewards of that investment. Yes. So uh, we are very ambitious, but there are some things that are quite easy to do. Yes. It's it's just basic logic, no corruption. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do things the right way, yeah. put the investment in, and we'll see the rewards because we have the people. Wow. According according to insiders and reliable sources, mm. they say that you know Sasha Mutai got the overwhelming. Uh, uh, goodwill from the government. We've seen President William Ruto himself reiterating his love and commitment to grow and develop sports so that, you know, mm. through talent a lot of young people yeah. can get empowered because sport is huge mm. and is a, it has proved to be a lucrative employer mm. globally. I don't know, when is the likelihood of us witnessing President himself appearing at the RFU grounds to Oh. <laughs> watch one of the local games because it is something that has not been witnessed in the longest time. Mm. Yeah, the so former president, yeah. Uhuru Kenyatta, I think, graced one of the games sometime back, though. Yeah, it was to a but test match. Yeah, it was a test yeah, match. Yeah, so, yeah, so we, yeah. we invited the president for um, the World Rugby Under 20 trophy, yeah. and we'll see uh, when he has, uh, you know, his, his calendar is very yes. busy. Um, but yes, he's behind all sport in Kenya. Uh, the Ministry of Sport has been quite helpful. I can tell you one thing. Even before I came into office, the PS at that time, uh, Jonathan Mweke, had gotten uh, you know uh, a request from the team that they yes. needed residential camp. But of course, you know Kenya Rugby Union is in debt. So the serious yes. debt that we also have to clean up. So the PS that time also arranged for Kenya Sevens to go into that. So yes. we, we we got the, be the best environment over more than a year uh, that the team was playing in the series. This yes. was more than a year now they had a proper uh, environment. Mm -hmm. So government is behind us and we are behind them because we have to do work together. And as I was saying, at the end of this year, we want to be self-reliant, not just asking government for money. What we just request yes. is that piece of land and we shall do the rest of it. Government is there to do policy mm -hmm. and they have put things in place, in, you know, sports fund and, uh, and the whole structures. Uh, we are going to help them as private sector, even us. I mean, we are sitting here as a lender, so yes. we love yeah. this country. We're not going anywhere else. Yeah. We are here. We are here to stay. We'll die here. We need to improve this country. We're not going anywhere else. Yeah. So it's up to us. You didn't let to. Akwama, you have to build this game. Yeah. So we are going to help the government. We have to help ourselves and, and the government. And, you know, things like unemployment can be solved with sports. Yeah. Yes. And now, if you look at TV and, and betting, betting is, 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 is on sports. So we have to yes. use our sporting activities. Yes. We are providing content, mm -hmm. yeah, which is entertainment. As I yes. said, instead of going to drink in a bar, you mm -hmm. can go watch rugby. Come we want to change rugby. things, yeah. including that news night games. You know? yes, when you have yeah. floodlights, yeah. things are safe, mm -hmm. you can go watch a game. It can be Friday night. Yes. Who says rugby has to be only on Saturday? Saturday yeah. 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 We have to spice up things. Yes. It's 2023. Mm -hmm. So we cannot True. be the same way it was in the 90s and 80s. Yes. At that point, all rugby globally was was, was amateur. Yes. Uh, after the 1995 World Cup, ah. rugby went pro. Yeah. But we are still amateur. Mm -hmm. We have to go professional this year. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The calendar for National Sevens circuit is out. And yeah. uh, I think, as usual, <laughs> yeah. fans get uh, passionate about the entire circuit, mm -hmm. you know as the rugby traverses the whole country. What are the plans of even making this better going forward? Yeah, hopefully this week we shall announce a sponsor for the seventh uh, circuit. And then it starts in Dala this coming uh, yes. mm -hmm. weekend. And then it goes to Mombasa for drift roads. Yeah. And then there's a break. And it's spread over uh, mm -hmm. basically three months from July to September. The last tournament and then the next one will be the uh, Africa Cup. So from this seven series, um, the Kenya Sevens team will be chosen. The, you, know, the, you might see a few new faces, but the coaches and the, you know, the panel will choose the players from there. It's going to be exciting because all players will be available. Ah, we need yeah. to see every player playing. So now, I mean, uh, it's going to be exciting because people now have to fight for their positions. Yes. You know? Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. I think... Uh, they, now they usually say the ball is in your coach yeah. to deliver everything yeah. that you've put. Self-reliance, investment, I think yeah. those are the key points uh, that people are going to take from your administration. Mm. And I believe you can do it. 
Yeah, so, you President, you are, you, are, you are parting short. What are you promising the fans who have always demonstrated, you know, overwhelming love for the sport? Because mm -hmm. as a man who is widely travelled, I'm sure if you go overseas and you ask those foreigners which sport they know and understand mm. in Kenya is athletics and rugby. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and one day, yeah. can we replicate what happened in 2016 in Singapore? One day, will, will it come to pass? I want that not to just be a one-off. It should be, yeah. we should be in finals. Kenya should be semi-finals, finals, and winning. A top and, five And content. eventually, of course, we want to revive Safari 7s. Uh -huh. And we are ambitious enough to say that, yes, once Safari 7s is back up to the level it was and surpassed, yes. we shall also be bidding now to have a World 7 Series leg in Kenya. Because, again, uh -huh. Kenya is a beautiful country, tourism, yes. destination, and all yeah. that. Why don't we have a 7 Series here? Yeah. But we have to prove ourselves. We don't want any help, uh, you know, like Musaada. Mm -hmm. yes. I think we are it's good enough. Being done yeah, for, yeah. Us. Yes. for us right now, this year is because of the issues we have had, we need to get that, you know, we have, we have government support, mm -hmm. a lot of it, including yes. for this uh, World Rugby Under 20 trophy. Mm -hmm. But, you know, going forward, we need to be self-reliant. Mm -hmm. Government has its play, uh, what to do, but we have a bigger part to do. We cannot yes. just be begging all the time. Mm -hmm. Kenya rugby used to be, you know, nominated and, and, and won, you know, uh, uh, sports team of the year, the year sports yes. federation of the, the year. year. It was running well. Yes. And that's what we need to do. And it's, it's uh, just the culture has to come back. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we have the team that can do it yeah, on the board. Yeah. The team on the ground, we have no doubt. Mm -hmm. That one is not in doubt because, as I said, it the talent really is hard. there. Yes. We have players. The one thing we don't lack is players. We don't have to import players, really. We have them. Yeah. But, uh, and of course, we have passionate people who have been running teams and, and, and national teams and their own teams. Mm -hmm. And uh, very hard circumstances where there are no sponsors. People are chipping their own money. I mean, even the Kenya, the Lionesses team, their own coaches were also paying the players. So it's, it was, it's embarrassing. I've heard yes. all these stories, and I'm saying we have people, our name was a lender. They uh -huh. have used their own resources. Yes. And, and of course, now it's showing. But, um, I mean, these are the people who should be getting national honors. Uh -huh. So we will also be pushing uh, in December yeah. for people, you know, we can give a story. Yes. Kenya rugby has stories, people coming, you know. Yeah, uh, there was a book that came out, I think, 100 years. 100 rugby, years, yeah, by yeah. Zach Olo. Yes. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah so it's actually 110, 110 years. years. 110, 110 years, years yeah. plus. Yeah. So this, that book is there available, mm -hmm. and um, the story is there, and that yeah. was part one. Yes. So he's already working, Zach Olo is working on part, uh, part two. two. yeah. Because there's a lot. Yes. Yeah. And there's a lot more content now, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. But uh, the story is there, and uh, maybe we want to see this on Netflix in a, in a few <laughs> years. The rise of Kenya rugby, you know, getting to a World Cup, winning, and all that. Yes. People making money from the game. You know. Yes, the yeah. talent is there. Uh -huh. You know, players going to France to yes. play or Japan, mm -hmm. earning good money. You know, yeah. that is possible, and that's well, what that is possible. That is practical, practical, yeah. practical. It is yeah. possible. Yeah. Wow, yeah. quite an insightful conversation with one man who means well for the development and growth of the sport. Sasha Alexander Mutai joining us this particular afternoon to share, you know, uh, the plans and aspirations he has uh, towards the revival of, you know, rugby, which enjoys huge fanatical following countrywide and his main agenda is professionalize the sport and attract sponsors back at the helm of Kenya Rugby Union, you know, something that was being witnessed back in the day. And, you know, I think this is the conversation we will keep having as day goes by so that we see, you know, the growth of the sport and uh, the teams, both Kenya National Rugby Sevens team, Shuja, alongside 15, the Simbas and Lionesses performing, not only at the continental stage, but even on the international platform. Because he says, just like we did in Singapore Sevens, conquering uh, during uh, HSBC World Seven Series, you won't uh, be uh, seeing this being a one-off, but, you know, an ongoing event that, you know, Kenya will be conquering at the global stage. Thank you for coming through, Sasha. It's been uh, amazing and pleasure having you on board. Probably we look forward to having you once again in the future, even as we keep talking about, you know, development and growth of the sport. Yeah, it's been my pleasure to come here and update you and, you know, uh, tell the fans what's happening. And all fans need to come and watch the games, you know, and support the team.
and, and buy these shirts. Oh, and yeah. other shirts. These Actually. are available. Yeah. <laughs> una buy, una buy, una buy yeah, we'll get one. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get one. But there is one thing that has been troubling me. You know, I've yes. been doing this interview, yeah. and I just want to have to ask, is this the Monaco Tagua Classic? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Kalinga 36. Yeah. 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 Still Makoi. with his love for watches. Hey, Osoro with his love for watches. Let me have a pleasure doing this. Don't go away, stay tuned. Touchline continues. Uh, very good afternoon.